Saint Margaret of Scotland, who lived from 1045 to 1093, wife of the Scottish King Malcolm III, introduced important religious reforms into Scotland and was a civilizing agent in the social life of that country. Information about the early life of Saint Margaret is based on tradition. For her later years, there is a dependable life of Saint Margaret written by her confessor, Turgot. Saint Margaret of Scotland was a truly liberated woman in the sense that she was free to be herself. For her, that meant freedom to love God and serve others. Not Scottish by birth, Margaret was the daughter of Princess Agatha of Hungary and the Anglo-Saxon Prince Edward Atheling. When she was 12, she was sent to the English court of Edward the Confessor and further educated. Margaret's father returned to England at the request of the king, and he brought his family with him. He was to become the successor to the throne. However, Edward died immediately after the family arrived, leaving Margaret fatherless. Soon, war broke out. In 1066, at the Battle of Hastings, the Anglo-Saxon English lost to the Norman French. Margaret's family fled from William the Conqueror after his victory. Her widowed mother set out to take her children north to Northumbria. Tradition says Agatha decided to leave Northumbria and return to the continent, but her family's ship got caught in a storm. The storm drove their ship even more north to Scotland, where they were shipwrecked in 1068. The spot they landed on is now known as St. Margaret's Hope. The Scottish king, Malcolm III, invited the family to stay at his castle until their boat could be repaired. During their visit, Malcolm fell in love with Margaret. He asked her to marry him. Margaret asked Malcolm for time to think about this decision. Although she too was falling in love, she always believed that God was calling her to be a nun. Margaret asked her mother for advice. She talked to a priest about how she could know what God wanted her to do. The priest told her to pray and that God would guide her to make the right decision. After spending time alone in prayer, Margaret knew that God was calling her to a life of service as a wife and mother. Malcolm and Margaret were soon married in his castle. During their marriage, Margaret and Malcolm grew more deeply in love. Malcolm was good-hearted, but rough and uncultured, as was his country. Because of Malcolm's love for Margaret, she was able to soften his temper and polish his manners. He left all domestic affairs to her and often consulted her in state matters. Together they prayed, fed the hungry, and offered a powerful example of living faith in action. Malcolm saw that Christ truly dwelt in her heart. Margaret helped him become a virtuous, gracious leader. As the Queen of Scotland, she encouraged Malcolm to educate the Scottish children. Together, they worked to establish schools in the country. She read to him from the Bible and encouraged monasteries to open in Scotland. Margaret was not only a queen, but a mother. She and Malcolm had six sons and two daughters. Margaret tried to improve her adopted country by promoting the arts and education. Her impact in Scotland led her to being referred to as the Pearl of Scotland. She constantly worked to aid the poor in Scotland. She nursed the sick, 
She even brought homeless people into the castle. She encouraged people to live a devout life, grow in prayer, and grow in holiness. Malcolm helped her to build churches, including the Abbey of Dunfermline, where a relic of the true cross is kept. Although she was very much caught up in the affairs of the household and country, she remained detached from the world. She was well known for her deep life of prayer and piety. She set aside specific times for prayer and to read scripture. She didn't eat often and slept very little so she would have more time for her devotions. She gathered women together to pray and to study the scriptures. She and her husband would go to church during Lent and Advent. On the way home, they would wash the feet of poor people in need and help them. At home, Margaret fed nine orphans who were brought to her daily. She was then said to sit them upon her knee and feed them. War broke out and Malcolm engaged the English near Alnwick. He was killed in battle, along with Edward, his son and heir. Margaret, already weakened due to illness, was not told of her husband's and her son's death for fear of worsening her condition. Upon her deathbed, Margaret clasped her hands around a black cross, which she held in deep veneration. This was thought to be part of the true cross. Eventually, Margaret learned of the death of her husband and son. Whether due to illness or the news of her loss, she died four days after Malcolm. Margaret and Malcolm were buried together under the high altar of a monastery. Devotion to the Holy Queen began soon after her death as she was canonized in 1250. Her children are believed to be primarily responsible for two centuries of progress and peace in Scotland. Merciful God, you gave the Holy Queen Margaret of Scotland great love for the poor. Lend your ear to the intercessions of this holy woman and help us to live after her example so that your goodness and mercy becomes visible in today's world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.